welcome back to the Intrinsic Minds podcast with me and G.O.D. once more. Um, another, what did I say last week, Gio? Another day, another digital another day, dollar. Another digital dollar. Another day, another another douchebag like Andrew night. Tate. <laughs> While, another top G. Another top G. Another day, know. another influencer. Another day, another bitching person. <laughs> I don't give a shit. Yeah, dude. I it's the, the we're recording this on April fifth, so like I, you know, so if we we mentioned some astrology transits and it's two weeks behind, that's why. But mm -hmm. the energy shifts, man. We were just talking about it. Yeah, crazy, dude. What a week. What a week it's been. What a week it's been with. I mean, actually, since March, since the ingress with Saturn in the Pisces, and we have Pluto Aquarius, and we have all this stuff. You could, I, I'm sure everyone feels it out there. Like it has been not so. And to be honest with you, the mainstream really has, to me, it's it's stooped lower than I, it has in a very long time, if maybe ever. Is like everything is such like it has a sitcom energy to it. Like it's drama. It's like Netflix series type of clown show, circus freak nonsense that's going on. It, it, you know how we know that too. We're we're we. <laughs> this is what cracked me up. Do you want to talk about mundane, stupid shit? The fact that all news stations, especially Fox, right? They're following a fucking plane, a plane, Donald Trump's plane. They know where it's going. Why are we following a fucking plane? You know where it's going. You know what's going to happen. You know the case. You know how it's going to turn out. It's not the like. Who gives a shit? Who gives a it's, shit? To really? me, it's to me, it's like the same tactics that just. It's just always the same. Sh it's distraction. Yeah. Yes. Meantime, we're not looking it gets about you how away from everything that you should be looking at. Yeah. That's it. It's not that looking simple. about how the fact that the, the other things that can be looked at. Just one of the things on a mundane level, but really does affect everybody is the fact that like money. Yeah. It's not going to mean shit. A Are lot of countries are about to like, just, yeah. Yeah. Plunder. Every country is banned. Has, a lot of countries have banned together. Stop buying oil from us. Stopped using our currency as a, as a, as a median for exchanges and stuff like that. People don't, people don't fucking see it. They don't give a shit or they do see it, but, it's like we're it's to, it's to watch the way the world works now is everyone's just programmed for the stimulation and the and the and the you know oh here's a, some dramatic scene that yeah. like is you know Donald Trump you know the indictment is it ironic that all these countries on the same week that Donald Trump and the indictment mm. thing is going on and all this other stuff is happening and then on the same week you have like the BRICS right was is that, is that the the uh, what, who, who, what countries are involved with that? Russia? Oh, yeah. Russia, China, Brazil. Um, Indonesia? Or is that I in India? There? No, not India. Not India. India. I think you're right. Indonesia. Okay. Well, now like Malaysia was just added. Yeah. Um, I don't know. There's more. They're, 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 and it's all like Saudi Arabia said they're not taking America basically serious That's anymore. With another the, one. Like. So all this is happening, which is very important. And it's like, wow, you should totally be alarmed by that a little bit. Like, this is definitely going to cause some shifting and change, like bigger than what, you know, Donald Trump, his hairpiece looks like. And, you know, what his indictment paid off, bring. like uh, who he <laughs> allegedly, you know, this, well, we don't I, even, but this thing is, but the thing is with all that stuff, too, is that's all still narrative things anyway, too. Like, I, I don't even I, are they really following in a plane? Did he really pay things off? Did he really do a crime? Did, it, it's like, yeah, and yes and no. Like, what, but the, all of that narrative crap is to me, it's like, honestly, the only thing that would be important is the well-being of the country, its financial system, and yeah. all this other stuff. And people economics. will be like, yeah, but we need to like talk about Trump or talk about Biden or talk about who's in office or talk the about presidency. what scumbag did no. they in the presidency, the, 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 the scumbags are, that are in, in higher positions of power. It's like, no, just worry about yourself, your family, and what's going on and what you need to prepare for for now. Like, what are you going to do if you know about Trump's hairpiece is getting locked mm -hmm. up for, you know, 60 days? Who, who yeah. cares? And watch the new thing now is going to be like, did you see that Robert uh, 
Robert Kennedy Jr. is going to be uh, uh, running for, as, as a Democratic nominee against Biden and stuff like that. That's going to be the new thing. It's like, oh, well, he's going to be against Big Pharma and he's the next new big thing and stuff. Because he's been he's been very outspoken about shit and stuff like that. And like, sure, it's very interesting in a way to see that. But it doesn't matter. The same same thing on the other side. Oh, Ron DeSantis is going to be for president. But I don't know if that's going to mess up things for the Republicans. It's like I said, it, dude, I walked downstairs. My, my mom had had news on and they were talking about I, I don't know. What is it? Some with the, the covid funds and they're talking about Trump and whatever. And I'm sitting there going, you know, I've never hated this shit more than I ever have. Now, like yeah. I can't even this is making me sick. Just hearing the sound of the reporters and the sound of the way the media delivers things and and what they're talking about and i'm sitting there going you know what be prepared for the financial collapse grow your own fucking food learn about learn about yourself and learn about things that you need to know about in the next few years and and become somewhat as sovereign as you could be maybe you can't just not pay your taxes maybe you have to pay a mortgage maybe you got to pay bills and all that but the most important thing is to have sovereignty but like sovereignty not in the like oh maritime law we got to free ourselves like no don't even pay attention to the system don't even get learn how to do things yourself and learn the things that you need that empowers you as an individual and then find the people that feed that and how you can basically barter your value and your skills and all this other stuff and go back to basics with things because if you just sit there and you're just watching the media and you're just watching all this stuff it's just it's not gonna go it, this is the emphasis really on a lot of this is like we're trying to talk about other things that could be empowering to the individual or to like people like opposed to the empowerment of like oh yeah fight the system it's like you fight the system by empowering yourself so and then becoming more knowledgeable and more wise and at least opening your mind to new things and not following system-based health and science and food and the food pyramid and gmos and anything the system does for your politics all this other shit it's like empower yourself you live in the age of i could just look up whatever the fuck i want on this thing mm -hmm. instead of you know hitting up system. some dms or, or going to some only fans account or fucking doing some weird dumb bullshit on here that make there are going to troll fucking youtube video whatever anything it's like empower yourself you know that's to me that's i don't know how people can't see that and i think what you're talking about with the financial thing happening like it's like that should be the the alarm like mm -hmm. going off in the head like oh shit like countries yeah. are not taking like we're not this you it, know we're not financial advisor or anything but like do you like do you no, know yeah, where your no, money's at like do you know advice. where you where you're putting shit like do you know if you should be moving some stuff around right now like you know not to not to go crazy or nothing and stuff like that but it's crazy but i yeah not even going to go into that, but I just think it's funny how like, and, and we did say, and then we, I want to tell everybody here like that. We kind of want to start off a lot of our, uh, start off a lot of our episodes kind of going on, you know, kind of discussing a little bit of the astrology that's currently going on as we're doing this recording. And then obviously when it's going to be, you know, released to you then. So the stuff that's going on then and kind of like talk about those things. But I feel like it's so funny. Like as we were talking about this, I'm like, you know what? It's kind of weird because it's like you, you do have like this full moon in Libra that's kind of happening. And it's kind of at, at the same time, wouldn't that be trying Pluto? And I feel like everybody's so heavily focused on the justice system or the weaponizing of a justice system right now, how some people are claiming that's happening with Trump and shit and uh, how there's no there's no real justice in some certain ways. And then other people feel like it is justice. And it's just like this real shadow side to things. And it's oh, I feel like that the, the collective conscious is just it, there's an illumination on the wrong aspects of everything right now when it comes to balance justice harmony those types of things even relationships you know not in, even intimate ones with people and stuff like that two sides of the fence there's no harmony in between whatsoever like it's weird it's just weird yeah yeah the weirdness i think would also be uh you know you have uranus and taurus and then Venus just passed over Uranus and Taurus. Venus rules relationships, also rules. It's ruled by Taurus. I mean, but you have like all of this energy is being like, it's just what isn't it like a, what, we have the, the the grand fixed cross or whatever 
right? Mm-hmm. Isn't that what's yeah. going on too? So you have the Pluto, Pluto Aquarius. You have the full moon. Mm-hmm. I think now. definitely dur- no, during the um, during the airy solar eclipse. That's when that is. Okay. So, yeah, yeah, we're approaching that. So we're like a fixed, like everyone's going to be fixed in their ideas and what they, whatever. And it's like, I mean, on top of it, I keep mentioning it to you. Like we have sun conjunct Chiron, which is like the wounded masculine. It's like not getting what you want. Not like I'm going to, you know, I'm going to be a man and get, you know, go fight the war and and kill and do my thing and go gain all the shit I want. And and I'm going to, I'm going to conquer this world and all of that. And Libra's like, no, you're not. You know, like it's just, it's, you got to work on yourself first before you do that because the Chiron aspect, but then we have our relationships to deal with and we have our, you know, so it's like you got to work on integrating yourself with that sun and Chiron. And then how is that affecting your relationships? And then your relationships, it being a full moon in Libra, is going to mirror, people are going to mirror it back to you. They're going to, they're going to show you. It's like where you need to be more diplomatic or where you need to be even more where your wound is and what, what it is you need to take care of. So like, yeah, the full moon energy is like a, it's like a primer, you know, or primer. So like mm-hmm. that solar eclipse energy and basically for the next two, what, 18 months of the nodes being more of an area. Yeah. Come July when we have that switch, yep. the, the nodal axis, Aries and Libra, like that's the thing that's going to be. So are we going to still Self be, and others? Yeah. Are we still going to be, you know, fighting for relationships that don't matter or picking sides that don't matter and stuff like that? Or are we going to fight more so for this, the fact of, like you even said, our sovereignty, our identity, our true identity, not who we identify with in those groups or in this relationship or, you know, uh, uh, this type of idea or something like that. It's the fact of, what is genuine to you and where where you are celestially like wh- wh- who are you what drives you and that's and and that's the thing and like already we're getting a weird pre-shadow of it on the big stage that <laughs> a lot of people are not doing that it's a, it's weird out there i mean i think mm. that's why i get a little fired up it's like how are you not watching this shit and going the world is wounded talk about the wounded masculine mm. i mean it's like our leaders have no like there's no integrity in our leaders there's no driver passion and it's all shadow stuff Mm -hmm. like you could tell like you look out there and you're like this is bullshit like these aren't these i don't not learning anything from these people oh it's like you know it's like that one saying it's like you know i learned what not to do from my parents it's like Mm -hmm. i've learned what not to do from the you know the gop and the fucking politics Mm -hmm. and uh, i've learned what not to do just by watching the world more on the main on the main stage and it's funny because then you know when you go out by the way into your local neighborhoods and all that stuff it it, people do see it and it's not as that radical it's not like that crazy out there i mean i'm down in florida you know i know that that helps a little bit being down here but like i don't know you don't really i don't have that vibe as much as i do when i'm watching that artificial turd called a television downstairs and i'm walking Mm -hmm. by it i'm like you know, I, I on my TV, I always have a movie going or some informational thing or doc. Mm-hmm. Like, I never have TV. Yeah. On. I had like, somebody ask me, they were like, you don't watch the news? And I'm like, I don't have cable. I was like, why do I need the news? I haven't had cable in here. It's, I haven't had cable in my room for like, I'm like, I get my years. news. I see. Yeah. I know what's happening on the world stage. Not only that, I mean, if you follow the astrology, it's kind of, you know, but that's the thing that's crazy, though, is that a lot of people that. It, it it baffles me even more that people that see the astrology how still they have this kind of naivety that they don't want to see or they still get very listen i get it i understand people they're giving the people what they want right give them wine and bre- wine and bread at a circus and you know they go crazy like and there's your there's your gold tokens right there but the thing is though if you're getting good astrology even from those same people right and you're starting to learn something about the astrology maybe you're not learning i don't know maybe you're not learning astrology but i mean then you could kind of start to see the the balance and the teeter of things and you could be like i don't think i don't think this is something that needs focusing on like right now like i think this is actually pretty pretty toxic at this moment i'm tired of this i don't i yeah i think i need to kind of look inward on that like that's that's kind of like my point like i see it 
don't get me wrong. I see it. Like we're talking about it a little bit right now, but once again, it always, we keep reverting back to being like, yeah, that's happening out there. And potentially maybe we're seeing it, maybe we're not, but also we know that it's happening out there because whatever those individuals that are perpetrating those things, it's also happening inside for them. And they're not in control what's happening inside for themselves. So it's like, oh, I'm very susceptible to being just like that or doing something different. Definitely. It, it, it's, I think it just gets down to simplifying things. Mm. That's all. It's just stepping away from, like, it's like a, a lot of people that, if, if I have talked to people about politics or the mainstream and the world and media and all that stuff, is like they talk like they're going to do something about it. And no one ever, like, we know that it's like you're probably not going to do anything. You know, it's like it, 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 it's like it always ends up that well, you you know, when the voting co comes, you gotta you gotta vote for the right person. That, that's the, that's the older, that's the older. Yeah, we 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 we, we right. <laughs> and it's like yeah, it's a full moon talking. Um, yeah. you know, from that there you go. And it's like no, the wounded masculine. It's like yo, go go the fuck in and just like wake the fuck up, like it and do what it is you need to take care of and all of that. I'm going on a, a little a bit of a healing journey of like trying to remove vices and trying to start up new things and and focus on what it is you know but like if i was sitting here watching that tv and how like i would not i probably wouldn't be able to do half the stuff i'm trying to do now because my mind would just be muddied and be muddied up with just bullshit and i don't yeah. know how people like i just think the solution is simple you know disconnect mm -hmm. from those things and go inward and that's what the astrology is saying you know the astrology is saying that like the astrology is like hey we have we have wounds to deal with and we have ourselves to kind of to re you know to reintegrate uh, a lot of uh, past traumas that need to be just taken care of so we could let go of those things and then and then project out we're all just still projecting trauma out like that's what i see from the media like i just mm -hmm. i just see it's just projection 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 it's like it gets old what were you saying before we were recording i'm fucking tired of hearing a lot of people yeah Right, I'm tired of the shouting from the other side of the fence from everybody. Like, and I'm like, and and so heavily strong opinionated and stuff on on these set ways and stuff like that. When meantime, like, don't get me wrong, I'm opinionated right now about other people's opinions on just how they're looking at things, but not on one side of an opinion, on both sides. And I'm just like, meantime, I'm just thinking, I'm like, man, I'm like. If people only knew to really observe, if they if they knew their chart to really observe, like the Aries Libra axis right now in their chart, and the Taurus area of their chart right now, especially with that, and even the Scorpio area of their chart right now, and then on top of it, wherever Saturn is, because Daddy Saturn's just in there, just like, uh, is that what you're going to do with your beliefs? Is 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 that is that really your intuition? Is that what you really think you're doing? Like, you know. Is, is this is this what really what we're going to indulge in? You know, go ahead. You have you could do it. You can make those choices. <laughs> but I think you're going to get smacked up a little bit later if you don't really look at them and be like, uh, OK, maybe maybe I'm going a little bit too beyond in this belief. Maybe I'm getting a little too carried away in this indulgence of something. Um You know, maybe I need to kind of set some limits for myself and and stuff, you know. <laughs> Not sitting there just being like, well, Saturn and Pisces and there's, 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 and, and <laughs> there's, it's in the water. <laughs> there's the pollution and the train derailments. Uh, Listen, we're going to keep seeing that shit anyway. So that stuff to me is like, it's cool. Like it's cool to see synchronicity and all that. Yes. Like that's cool. But like, is it relevant? Like that's the, that's been like kind of like what we've been trying to figure out. Like what did these, these certain topics and things we want to talk about is it, it's just, is it relevant to like the end more of so like to the individual more than anything. And then how is that going to then benefit and like, kind of like, per, you know, perturbate out to the rest of people? Like, how can we come to self first and like be aware of certain things that are important that we, any, you know, when I go on, I told you I play Call of Duty. When I go on and I listen to what people talk about, even on there, and I'm sitting there like, if they ever heard my podcast, these these guys, a lot of them, they would be like, "What the fuck are you talking about?" And I'm sitting here like going, "Yeah, that's the problem. 
Like, you don't even know what the fuck I'm talking about. Like, you have no clue. (laughs) Right. But, like, you have, like, a lot of people are like that. You bring up stuff. It's like, I can't believe astrology is even still, like, taboo or still, like, considered a chick thing. Like, it's not, it's not, it's, it's, it's metaphysical. It's it actually men back in the day, like real fucking men. The people who invented math and language yeah. and were astrologers, like the, real scientists, real philosophers. Yeah, r- real builders of society. Actually, yeah. Just but just to see how people's focus are just so. It, it just it's I don't know. I don't. I, I I get the frustration. Like that that frustration does exist, especially on a full moon mm-hmm. in Libra opposite you know aries and all that with with the Mm chiro like it's like yeah there is a bubbling thing of like man i'm kind of sick of shit Mm -hmm. you know i'm sick of like everyone's focus just being in just the wrong place and i'm saying that like for me it'd be like focus on yourself Mm -hmm. like focus on what it is you need to do for you like step away from the media and the biden and the trump and the gop and the fucking china and the fuck they say like you're you're not going to do anything about it Mm. And yeah. then, like the, and I, I'm, I'm telling you, dude, like the older generation is like, but you gotta vote, and you gotta know who to vote for, and you gotta whatever. And the younger generation is like, I don't give a fuck. I'm just making a fuck TikTok, bro. Like, <laughs> and like, do this dance, watch me do the, the fucking yeah. trend on my fucking put, sprinkler. Put, put that Juice World song on again. I really oh, like that. God. I really, dude. Made- it's <laughs> funny you said that because <laughs> I'm sitting there, I'm I'm watching my nephew today, and all of a sudden he throws on some Sonic YouTube video, and it's like a music video for Sonic, and little Yachty, Wiz Khalifa are on there, just doing their thing, and I'm like, and I just look at him, I'm like, I don't give a shit, he's five years old, but I looked at him, I go, why the fuck are you watching this? I go, what is this? I don't know. He doesn't even know what he's watching. There's no... Adults are like Structure. that too right now, by the way. Adults exactly. Are- That's yeah. the problem. Because like, they're why are just you as watching absorbed. the five with Jesse Waters right now. Well, I don't know. I think yeah. so I think he's kind of nice. I don't know. I think I trust him. Why are you watching the view? <laughs> There's a lot of people that I know that don't watch the view that you think watch the view. But you know why? Don't. You know, I get people who like, all right. So coming from someone uh, here. So I if you followed this long enough, you know, I'm an anime guy and I'm a fantasy guy and I like, you know, you, you Gio, you like the game of Thrones. Everyone like the yeah. game of Thrones, but I'm, I, I'm by an the anime. way, I tried to get my nephew to watch some, like the most epic fight scenes from dragon ball. Cause I was like, come on. It's they kind of have like the same powers like in Sonic and stuff like that. Like the same animations. Nope. Fixed. Fixed. Pissed me off. Actually. Yeah. Uh. You got to show him attack. You want to really get, you want to, you want to start planting seeds, dude. Attack on Titan. Talk about the, pre- t- t- this I is what the it. world might He's really too be. Too much like. of a pussy though. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, so, but the, the, the point I was going to make is uh, that escapism is not actually escapism from my own, like, oh, it's my own. Tr-. Like I, I watch shit and I play video games and stuff. I get, I do it to get away from stupidity and like people who are mindless. It's mindlessness. It's things that, I have to like, I don't know. Like, it, like I, I have to be mindless every now and then. Like, that's an important thing. That is my mindlessness. But I mm-hmm. actually, what leads me to that moment is actually go- going out and trying to take the world serious. Like, I actually go watch cartoons and anime because I went and tried to take the world serious. And I try to like, I try observe and I'm watching people and I'm watching it. I'll, I'll try and like sit down there with my mom. Like she's watching the news. I'm sitting there. Okay. I'm going to sit here for like 15 minutes. I'm going to really try to digest what they're saying here. And every time I, it's just like, why do I try? Like, yeah. well, why I, it's, we've gotten to a point now where, yeah, like if we're talking astrologically, the shift is happening and I'm sure everybody could feel it out there. Everybody's feeling it. Saturn went into Pisces, Pluto Aquarius. I emphasize those two things because I felt them probably the most. Like I have a, I have a lot of good stuff going on there and a lot of hard, hard stuff, but it's, it's still good. All of it's good, you know, <laughs> but, um, in a way, though, I, the challenge part of it is actually eased up because I'm, for me personally, I'm getting a, a nice flow of energy with it, so it's helping. But knowing the astrology has helped me out. Just the, it's it, it, f- figure something out to like stop parroting and stop being the same people. Like, get let's break out of this and start talking about new things tonight. We we you know because well, this is following last week, saying we had some, you know after we were done with the astrology, we wanted to get back into the morphic fields and all that, because it does still play into like 
group think like this is all like i think this is why maybe i'm a, i'm personally obsessed with a lot of this stuff like this the the topic of people who are who are stuck in group think because that's what's most aggravating it's why i like to separate myself from society the most hive mind is so real and it's so zombied out and it's so like you're dealing with the remember when zach from gematria effect cursed out like one of this kids who clocked in he's like yo bro like gematria bro like the numbers and he goes yeah. oh yeah bro why do all oh, you people well, he, goes, he goes why do you why do you why does your generation all sound the same like fucking bro like fuck cheetos bro fuck video games bro what bro and the kid, kid like got upset but he's like yo fuck you zach like this and that but i'm sitting there going no you fucking need to hear that dude like talk like yourself like yeah. don't talk about your don't talk like you know, no your favorite rapper talks or like uh, uh, it's like dude i'm from north plainfield which is like a pretty white suburban area in the middle of like a ghettoish area like it's up north new jersey like it's like up in the mountains and it's surrounded by like a ghetto thing i went to a lot of elementary school with a lot of different cultures you know whether it was mexican or whatever i'm still who i am like i know no outside force made me go all right bro i'm gonna start talking like this bro like i i don't know dude like it's that like that shit but then like yeah. you talk to people like older people like about politics it's the same thing. Well, well, Trump was going to do this and Trump was going to do that and they should have done And then, but it's always the same. That's what I, it's like, there's no individuality. And then it makes me want to escape because I'm sitting there going, we live in zombie land. Um, I think a part of it, a big part of it too, is like, I mean, this is why you do have to have a look at what we're even saying when it comes to morphic fields and even just the group think that happened with COVID and also the, mm -hmm. the, the, the reality that everybody was forced to be smacked with at that time to be like, Oh shit. It doesn't matter that I'm a, this job. It doesn't matter that I'm a, this it doesn't matter that I'm you, nobody's title fucking meant shit anymore. We all were in the same shit. Yes, maybe different levels and different decks of the ship, but it didn't matter. It, it was just the fact that it was like, oh, okay, well, we're all riding the same ride. You know, we're all affected in this certain sort of way. So a lot of people got faced with the fact and, and couldn't actually face it that they had no real personality, that they had no real individuality, that they had no real substance behind who the fuck they were. And it's upsetting because you know that a lot of people have taken in these different types of ways of being from the culture that's being presented to us. And the culture that's being presented to us is trash, absolute trash. Fuck this inclusiveness bullshit and trying to get everybody to be androgynous beings and uh, all this shit. Participation like, no. trophies. That's um, it. You there's know, no, there's no differentiating who's who, especially when you look in some of these groups. And I'm not just talking about liberals. I'm not just talking about, you know, certain communities and stuff like that or certain races. I'm talking about even the other side of it, the conservatives, these people and stuff. And trust me, I come from a family that's very conservative and I know you don't, you do too, Ray, but that's what I mean. Like we're not attached to it to the point where we're going to call it out. We're going to call it how I see it, like how we see it. Once I see a whole group of people thinking alike and knowing that they're actually it's being weird. influenced, it's well, it's just to me, I don't trust group think. That's all. Mm -hmm. Like, I just don't trust groupthink much. Like, of course, like at some point, yeah, like what I, I get, like, it just, there's a vibe I get from, especially with politics. Um, I mean, I, I told you, I use this analogy, the one episode, like I'm sitting there going, you know, I gotta, I gotta deal with certain friends that are certain football fans. And there's a hive mind vibe to football teams and their fans. And you would just think, oh, well, he just acts like a Dallas fan or he just acts like an Eagles fan or just no, there is definitely some sort of the way I would actually love to think about this is, you ever, you know, like you have your, your iPhone on and you left your automatic updates on and like it's like, oh, like or your subscriptions. I think even subscriptions would be better here. Like you, you, you subscribe to apps football teams or baseball teams or your favorite restaurant or 
some sort of political party. You've bought, you subscribed. Okay, I'm subscribed. But this is more of a, a spiritual subscription and all of that. And if you forget to kind of like shut that off or cancel those things and you let them like resubscribe in the background and that shit's just taking your, your spiritual currency, it's just taking your energy and you're also getting the automatic download feature. So like, I feel like what morphic fields and morphic resonance proves is that habits, memory, species, you know, within a species and all that, it's kind of like the iPhone where you have subscribed to apps and you've paid for them and you've put it on automatic update and you've whatever and whether your the app the itself is updating or your money is being taken out that shit's automatic and because you've become an eagles fan or a dallas fan i use those because i have a lot of friends other i use those teams because i have a lot of those fans by the way but like uh anything uh and i i'll bring this up again polit politics or musical genres or comic-con people or anything like that when you're when you've subscribed to that area of life and then you've connected yourself to these types of people you are now without even being in the when you're being non-fucking local to these people you're not even in the same state you were actually this stuff proves that you're influenced by it and that's me kind of trying to emphasize again like it's important to know because you're you're being influenced by things you you are not aware of and that's not just saying the stars but that's saying other people that's saying and that and it's not just say um uh it's not all psychology it's not all just emotions and psychology it's there's metaphysics to all of this stuff and to me being aware of that and knowing it's like, okay, so if you knew that you had this amount of money in the bank to spend this week and you had these apps on here, it's like, would you really be subscribed to half these apps if you needed the money or if you needed the the energy and the, or let's say the, the data that was coming, like if you were a Republican and you, you had an app and it switched to more of a democratic app and all that, would you subscribe to like, I'm trying to make like that point of like, is, are these things like valuable to you or are they even on your side? And if not, you're still paying them your energy and you're still taking in what they're giving without you realizing this, you have not cut the cord. And that's what morphic fields and resonance starts to kind of tell you. It's like the people you've connected with and the groups that you've connected with, you without if, if you haven't like made the statement, I'm done with this or I'm not that anymore or I'm still, you're influenced by it metaphysically. Yes, your thoughts, emotions, and all that sometimes might not even be yours. Sometimes your intentions of like, oh, this thing I like, whatever, it might not even be yours. And that's what morphic stuff, that's why I love this topic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, anyway. it's perfect because I, I feel like it's true, though. Like, when you understand the whole, or you start to observe more so of morphic resonance and morphic fields and stuff, like, you really get to see and, and being like oh shit like it really does seem like these society as a whole but even more so you know parts of society are like a super organism like that they just kind of they they just kind of act upon their own things like then they they just kind of develop and sustain this this cultural morphic field and like and organize the same way within each within each other and they all respond the same way in this like unified field and have the same characteristics and shit and it's like when that comes down to it, it makes you like for me at least it makes me question and be like oh, shit what do i do that with do i do that with certain things and i know i do there's certain things but like it's i'm not saying that all things are bad that's not what we're trying to say either that it's like oh it's so bad but when you heavily heavily get sucked into it and if you end up realizing it and you find that the rife is coming in your life and shit like then you kind of got to observe it a little bit deeper to be like oh shit this is what it is it's not that you know because th therefore you're going to deal with an identity crisis and what perfect time like we were just talking about the astrology like I feel like that's what we're coming into is, you know, we're constantly trying to hash it out with other people because we went so long with not really being able to be social with other people. Like we had to take a very synthetic route with being social with people because of, you know, the whole pandemic and shit like that and all, all this shit. And so now we're trying to overcompensate 
by being like, oh, well, we need to have this. We need to create these bonds with people. We need to have this relationship. Um, I need to be with this person. Um, we need to see eye to eye. I have to be with only this kind of person and stuff like that. Like, yeah, I think you need to be in your tribes and you need to be in your groups and stuff like that. But like also at the same time, it's like, do you even know if you belong there? That's the question you need to see. And if you don't, you need to do a healthy process of separating from that and even acknowledging it. Yeah. And what to me, I, I agreed uh, on everything is just like, to me is like the unconscious processes to me are what have like, I am, p people are so unaware of the unconscious processes that they have. And that's, and it's like what we're in, we're influenced by things that we cannot see. So if you don't have much conscious awareness to begin with in the first place and to notice that like that you need to individuate within a group of people and just that simply on uh, that surface level stuff it's like yeah you should be your own person in your group of people like that's pretty simple you should have learned that in like kindergarten like be your own person always be yourself right it's like something that your dad would say to you it's like always be yourself bud like don't uh don't don't bend and break to the system or don't bend and break to other people and but it is the wound that we're dealing with that is relevant to the astrology you know, it's, it is the Chiron Aries transit and it, and it's self is a, as a grand picture. Like we have to now, and why do you think during this time we had the, you know, speaking of wounded masculine, it's the Andrew Tate stuff and the red pill and that whole thing is the healing of the masculine. Same thing. You can even say with all the trans missions that we need to change in our cars, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> you know, and all the, um, bender genders uh honestly i don't even think we have to skate around it at the point we're at right now yeah but anyway I, so honestly and if we have i think we've already been been kind of blockaded a little bit especially on the youtube side already as it is so yeah my opinion <laughs> but anyway keep going <laughs> yeah but, yeah but so to, to me it's like people don't even know what like the the gender thing is like there's a confusion mm -hmm. there right it's like so Aquarius rules technology. So it's like, are we going to put chips in our brain? Aries, Chiron, right? It's like, I don't even know what masculinity is anymore. Oh, we need to redefine this and all that. I don't even know if I am a man anymore. I don't even know if I am a woman, you know, or a woman's like, I think I'm a man. It's like, are you sure? Uh, it's like, well, now I am. I went and paid for it, you know, but it's like, okay, but you're brave. <laughs> yeah. Be brave. You're so brave. You ever see rocket man? Be brave, Gary. <laughs> um, anyway, so, uh, but anyway, so yeah, that that is to me all of this stuff. And then on top of that, you have Uranus and the nodes passing through the financial house of the Zodiac. And you see that and you're like, we should probably focus on our egos, our individual selves and the healing of our masculine, plus worry about the or, or be concerned for the financial system and to learn how to be self-sufficient and all of that. And then also then how does all those dynamics that we have that we're working on ourselves how is that affecting our relationships and who it is we allow into our life and who we bring in and who we have to let go? So it's like, that's the important stuff. But, you know, how orange his hair looks today or what type of ice cream cone this guy is going to eat or, you know, if the Russians in China are going to like trade with wontons now or something, like whatever <laughs> it is, whatever it is, I don't care because it's not it's not relevant. To my own, <laughs> I, didn't ex I didn't expect that. Wontons, that's fucking great. Oh shit, no, like, for real though. I mean, I just it's just it's. But you see, it's funny because yeah. it's like, who gives a shit? Who cares? When you really take a step back, you see how ridiculous it is, and you also listen. We all got. Take a step back once in a while. At least the Saturn Pisces has given us a chance, even on the Pisces side of it, to be like, hold up, you're a little too serious. Have a little fun with it. You know, yeah. here, have 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 this. Have this, Saturn. Calm down a little bit. We got some time. You know, it, even though you really, you know, may not have that time and stuff like that. But maybe there can be a deeper introspective if you don't overdo it or something like that and that could be with anything <laughs> but um it's crazy though too because like you know we're saying with those energies that are coming in and stuff and and even the fact that even on april 11th that we'll have that venus enter gemini and venus is ruled by taurus and 
you know, and, and we were just saying about this whole feeling of people want their voice to be heard and Taurus rules the throat and Gemini rules speech. But it's really like, I think what this is trying to tell us, or at least how we can align with that proper harmonized energy of Venus Gemini with everything else going on, especially with identity issues and, uh, you know, kind of in the public arena and relationships with people, friends, blah, blah, blah. Try Pluto Aquarius too. Uh, there you go. Try and Pluto Aquarius too is really get to the bottom of things and trying to understand, okay, well, what do I have that's pent up in my throat chakra that's really true and valuable to me that I need to communicate, you know? And if I'm not able to properly communicate it, I need to work on those things. Like I need to actually kind of figure that out first before just spewing my mouth before, but you know, just because I need to express some shit, you know, that goes back to the whole respond, don't react. And there's a lot of things going on right now that it's very easy to react to. And you may think you're speaking from the heart, but you're just expelling an expression and projecting some sort of emotion. And like, this is where we need to kind of differentiate, especially on this, you know, on this with, you know, that we just have the new moon in Aries and then, then they have the full moon in, in Libra. And then we're going into the solar eclipse uh, in well, Aries again. Moon, yeah, blue moon, blue moon. Yeah. Like we need to come back around and try to Saturn Pisces discipline those beliefs, those emotions, kind of understand them, see what's valuable, what's not, and then communicate them both with the right people in the right relations in the right arenas. And yeah, didn't you say Pluto trines Venus too? Right? That'll happen, yeah. Yeah. When yeah, when Gemini Venus goes into Gemini, we have a trine, so we'll have, you know it's gonna be very shadowy sides to some of these you know, relationships that you know, or these people that you try to communicate with, or you think that you can like, you know, it'll be free flowing. It'll be free. It'll be, you give the ability to work through those things. And also like, Mm -hmm. I think it also gives a, it's like a Pluto's like a capacitor, right? So you're going to get a lot of power into like your, your voice and the speech and your communication Mm -hmm. and in your own network and, and humanity Mm -hmm. itself. Like it'd be a great time for podcasting. Yeah. It could be very freeing. It could be very revolution revolutionizing as well. But yeah, Pluto's transformation time, though. Right. Yes. Exactly. So with with a degree, you know, you can you can absolutely <laughs> throw it out there and crumble it, you know, just by not taking the time and structuring your words, I guess you could say in a way. Yeah. I mean I it's I I had, I said this on a phone call, and I'm not sure if I said it last week on here, but it's, you know, we look at, say, with astrology energies and all that, we see squares and certain things that are bad. It's like nothing's good or bad. It's just, you know, you you have things that are about to happen. And when you're aware of them, the anxiety has gone because you were aware and you were prepared to do them or that you knew that certain things were coming. Some things we can't predict, some things we can. Astrology gives us kind of like a peek into the future. It doesn't tell us exactly what's going to happen, but it's going to give us the vibe. And like, it's like, oh, all right, I'll keep my my kind of my guard up here and I'll be ready to do this and all that. And when you're aware of that, it's like, okay, be proactive. You know, it's just like people aren't proactive anymore. And then the hive mind is what brings to me, it's like, that's what's holding people back. It's like, oh, I feel like I have to be part of this group because I have to be part of the group. It's like, I haven't found my individual self yet. Chiron Aries. But I have to wound, I have to heal that wound first and be who the fuck I am. Like who the fuck am I? Like I that's that's what I need to figure out. And then like then I go find my people where it's just like, oh no, I'm a Democrat, I'm a Republican, I'm a this, I'm a that. I don't know what I am, you know, I'm both. I'm both on every level, you know. I I can't decide, so I guess I'm both, you know. Um, but like that whole thing is probably it's a, right now it's a game of distraction. It's just a game of distraction. And the hive mind or the group think is just as distracting. If anything, I think they play on that very much a lot. They know that people are influenced by a collective group and that they want to be a part of it because we're social creatures. I mean, this isn't metaphysics. This is just simple psychology as well. This is the more psychological level. We're social creatures. We want to be part of things. We want to be part of tribes. We want friends. We want people want to feel that we've been welcomed and, and accepted of who we are and all that. But if you're not really being your true self, Chiron Aries, mm-hmm. 
mm-hmm. and that's not healed, then you're going to end up in a false place. And, you know, and in Pluto Aquarius with people that are in working in networks and groups and all that, that's going to be a 20 year transit. You're going to want to be with the right people. You're going to want to, this is an opportunity right now. You're going to want to work on yourself and and heal it because you're going to want to be with the right people when this transit's going on. If you're with the wrong people, I mean, it's plutonic energy. You're going to be deceived by your tribes and your networks and all of that. You want to, you want to be in your own power and your own independency right now. Like that's, you want to gain that now. And that's with astrology, at least for me, looking at charts and these things coming up is like right now, it's like, we're still in a construction zone in a way. But it's almost done. It's like it should be almost done. Like we, it, it, at least like foundation wise. Like it's like yeah. it's going to be time to decorate soon. Ho- probably by next January. You have to like till next January, and it's going to be time to de- like okay, time to fucking really go. Mm-hmm. You know, I but still you think know, this is you more should know your carrier. detours by now. Yeah. <laughs> Just yeah. Just core stuff. That's all. And if you don't, mm-hmm. that should be. The, but if you're sitting there focused on what the group thinks or what politics are going on or what your favorite rapper said or it's that's the game it's the distraction even let's let's bring the truth community and all that same thing with these guys truth community is the same way it's like if you're just sitting here and this guy's just saying train to you know derailments and you know know, trump's a clone and this guy's whatever and the reptilians are taking over and it's you know wonton soup i don't know what else to tell you yeah. like it's whatever like the, you know trade whatever the trading is going on all that stuff Illumina- is relevant. illuminati arctic animals yeah whatever you know epstein <laughs> island david bowie island yeah um but like yeah i think it's just a game of distraction and here's here a segue into you know the morphic fields we'll talk about this a little more the distractions by mass amounts of people make it easier to become distracted by when you have a group of people and collectives of, uh, and, and you go on social media, I'm not saying that you just want to be a part of the conversation and be in this and that, whatever. But metaphysically, this is where the metaphysics are, are, are at play here. You're being sucked into these things without you knowing that you're being sucked into them. And that's what the other end, that's what the other side would want is distraction. And it knows that if you get sucked into the whirlpool of conversation, debate, trolling, social media, pictures, this, is this real? Is this not like that is, I think the number one enemy right now, it's not what other country or it's distraction from the things that are simple, getting back to basics that you need to work on. That's what I would see from the astrology and from the the idea of say why like morphic energy and knowing that you were influenced by like collective Wi-Fi from other people's thoughts and feelings and it's proven really at this point. Yeah, it's important to know because like you know exactly you you know where your influences are coming from. You know that you're being your individual self. You're being individuated. Yeah, and even to help you visualize that, even to remember that the fields by their nature are both within and around the things to which we're kind of referring to as well. Like a a magnetic magnetic field is both inside and also around it. Like the same way, like the whole theory of the gravitational field is both within the earth and around it and stuff, you know, as you see with the whole moon thing and then, being on earth and throwing up a ball or something and it coming down or something. Right. So no matter what, it's not like just this outside thing, like, or, or there's just something that we're encompassed in, you know, that, that, that is not permeable or in some sort of way, like it is. And like, it's crazy because we're talking about social influences, like in a way to kind of show you even how the morphic field thing works is it makes me think of kind of the hierarchical system in all primates, like all primates have the same hierarchical system. You think that the monkeys sit down and they could be chimpanzees or apes or freaking macaws. It doesn't matter. Like you think they're sitting down being like, hey, listen, we're macaws. The fucking chimpanzees, the chimpanzees over there in Indonesia, wherever the fuck they are and stuff, they do the same thing. 
They have this from the top down. No, they just, it's within the field that they know that there's a hierarchical system and you can't eat with this thing unless you kind of show your identity and stuff like that. And you raise your identity within and stuff and you show that you're an alpha pack, but even the same thing for the, for the females and they can't, you know, if they, they get on the outskirts and stuff and, and get lower on the, on, on the hierarchical system, if they're not, um, if they're not, you know, meeting with or part of or accepted by the alpha pack and stuff like that. Like it, it's, we're seeing that even play out amongst us. So I'm not saying like monkeys are really smart, but no, there's an intelligence know, that is there. Yes. It's just, it's, it's already there. And you have the monkeys that know how to traverse it and know how to be, you know, on top of that hierarchical system that's mainframed into that field that they're within, within an all primates. And then you have the other ones that obviously are going to be left out of the totem pole. So it's the same thing for us as humans, but just maybe in more complex situations, but not necessarily that complex. It's like, how are you going to be? Like, are you going to individuate and kind of find that way to boost yourself up and stuff. Not saying that you have to become part of some hierarchical system, but don't get stomped on and drowned underneath, you know, the systems at hand and these sorts of fields that you could easily get absorbed into the egregores. Yeah. And that's what I, I do want to, I, I mean, I, I guess what, I, what I'm surprised by is there actually sometimes when I go on like a, like a binge of research and I, I start looking into this one, how long the information has been out there, but also like how parallels go on and not many people just talk about the parallels. So like, yeah, the idea of like what an egregore is and the idea of what a pendulum is, you know, and then you have morphic fields. It's like, it's funny how I found the one article last night about egregores finally i finally saw one that where the guy's like yeah an egregore is a living entity it's a thought form and it's influence influences a group of uh, uh people and their consciousness and their decision making and all that and it's like an intellectual morphic field and i go oh that's what i wanted to see like finally someone's kind of paralleling it because it is there's something here there's like a bridge that's going on and on a metaphysical level we are connected mind wise like there's a hive mind it's a real thing it's not just like a it's not just like this general we don't think about it like we just think we a lot of people think they are who the fuck they are within the groups already like they're just like oh yeah you know like they, no one has like the introspection really isn't a thing with a lot of people they're, they don't realize that they're very influenced by the group but it's metaphysical it's something that's happening beyond, and so this is going to prove so many different things and for me i think what mostly is exciting is once you start talking about morphic resonance and you talk about the influence of energies upon your own mind and body from bigger bodies of things and groups of things the planets play right into it because everything's so non-local like if this species is learning something here and then this species starts to learn it and it's on a different continent that means and they're learning the same exact specific, say, traits and actions and stuff like wash, washing what a candied potato on different islands. Like it's real specific, you know, rats in water mazes and stuff like that type of stuff to me tells me it's a non-local memory that everything has access to. And that whole hippy dippy woo woo thing of we're all connected starts to sound a lot more sane and a lot more possible, which we know is possible. It's we know. I mean, like people forget these Zoom calls or our internet or phones, like there's, we're connected by the touch of a button in a split second. Somehow somebody's on my phone. It's like, we're all connected and the phones are a great analogy for the field, morphic field connection and all that. It's like, we're all like connected to the same network. You know, AT&T yeah. or whatever the yeah. hell you have. I, I mean, uh... That's the thing, though. It's like it, we have to understand and realize that there's an intelligence that's actually beyond the material. Like, it's not that it's contained within the material and the superficial. Like, it's beyond that. Like, it's it's like you just said, too. It's metaphysical. 
it's not something that we can sit there and, you know, calculate. And it's weird because like, we've constantly come to that point. And like, that's why I like the, where, how Rupert Sheldrake talks about it, especially how he's like, you know, especially back then more so when he was talking about it in the eighties and stuff like, and, and biology in the sense that he was like, Oh, like 1966 is when they really agreed upon the whole big bang thing and just kind of had this causational type of thing and didn't, you know, they say that that's how the laws of nature's the, the, the laws of nature were established. And it's like, well, what was before that? And it's pretty crazy how Nietzsche, like, like he, he proposed this opinion that it was kind of like, what if there was a natural selection with the universal laws and only some survived it? Kind of like we have that natural selection theory and stuff. So it's like there was other laws at play, other things that happened. And that would go hand in hand with a lot of the story of like, the re like giants and magic and stuff like that like that was more outside and then it's like natural selection those laws kind of have died off and now there's only a certain there's only certain laws that play and stuff like that and i thought that was a pretty interesting perspective that i never heard and stuff uh in in this realm with this and stuff but like it's not just this natural like um did, didn't you have something as far as on, on the on the oak tree you know that it's just like the, well, the i thought. mean what you're saying is is and and i'll emphasize this is that if it's happening naturally already it's not magic but it's magical right so yeah. it's something that's going on that we can't see that we not in our wildest dreams we would think that would be like a pot oh wow this is this actually happens like, oh my God, I actually influence people and other things like without even being in contact with them or I'm in, I'm influenced by groups of people and all that. I mean, like I, I, I'm very sensitive to everything, like when it comes to energy wise. And like, even when I turn on, like when I'm getting into football again and I become a Bucks fan again for the time, like when it's not football season, I'm not, I don't give a fuck about anything really football. I, I just watch press conferences every now and then. But when I'm the Bucks fan again, I feel so connected to the group. Like you just energetically, you start to change. Like you feel the football the season start and and the other fans and you feel like the, the group right so anyway that's a natural occurrence where i think that's it's why we're social beings because energetically we're built there there's certain things that go on that we don't see that we are energetically built to connect like a network and that's what the aquarian age is probably going to teach it's probably one of the main lessons is like hey we're connected without even knowing we're connected so anyway Yes, I, I to to say to show that it happens in nature and all that is, I have I, I I did prepare this week, so like one growing organisms like a tree you said right are shaped by fields which are both within and around them, right? So these fields called uh, through these fields we have the resonance and what that means what it would mean is that the resonance is it's five you know it's like what the five D people say. Right. It's, oh, we're resonating at the same frequency. I'm resonating 5D. Like, oh, yo, what's up, bro? We vibe. We're on the same frequency. Well, it's actually pretty literal, right? It means that the structure of the things that grow in nature have a, have a frequency. So there's a memory, right? And it's based actually what happened to the species in the past. Like you're saying, like, there's this natural selection that happens. Like, okay, that didn't work. So this has to now be here. Mm -hmm. But a lot of that with the oak tree and anything is that's the morphogenetic side. That's the like physical growth of, you know, the, the form of it. But what's crazy is the behavior of it all too. You know, trees communicate. They, they have all these like extrasensory things that go on and all of that. And these things were developed. And then every tree starts to develop that thing that that newly grown thing, like we say evolution. Right. Um, but yeah, so each species has its own field and within each each species not only does it have the field of physical growth and that it has this memory of like how the arms grow and how the legs grow and all that because and we'll talk about it a little after this dna doesn't dictate that dna just dictates what proteins need to, the synthesis and what needs to fire off and how it's like it's like a more of like the the materials than the builder and all that but like there's a there's a field within a field within a field for everything and this doesn't come with just physical things like trees or a body and all of that it comes with organisms and bodies of people or or a species itself and there's a memory in all of that so um 
an oak tree develops, but it comes from a little acorn, right? So there's this, it's like the, the tree isn't sitting in the acorn. The tree, the acorn's growing from just like these, gen, like it's this little seed and there's like nothing really to it. And then it just all of a sudden it transforms into an oak tree, right? So, but there's an invisible organ, like the DNA isn't building like the materials, like the bricks to the brick house isn't the builder, right? So like the DNA is like, okay, here's the bricks and here's the stuff that needs to go onto the house, but who's the builder, right? So there's the field aspect of it is saying that there's an invisible organizing structure, which organizes the, the oak tree's development, right? It grows it. There's like a, if you ever played a video game, right? You know, like you have that holographic mold that you see on like certain guys or whatever. And then all of a sudden it fills in, right? Like there's something to that to say that there's a mold kind of in line with the tree, but no tree looks alike. Mm -hmm. So there's something to that. It makes everything individual. Yeah. It's not like, a, you know, it's, it's weird because it's not like a, a Russian doll. Like there's not like a mini oak tree within the acorn or something like that. Right. That's, that's kind of like the proof of that. There's, there's no equivalence of cause and effect in any obvious way. And then it's like the main mechanistic theory of that, of like that whole thing, which is considered embryolo embryology, um, that somehow that oak tree was contained within the acorn, or at least it was thought to be. And then inside each, inside each acorn, there was a miniature oak tree that was inflated as the oak tree grew. And that was widely accepted, actually, which is crazy because we know that's not necessarily. Yes, but if that's not how it works and we can't take that mechanistic approach to it, then it's like um, there's something that's that's contained within the acorn, because then that would mean that the oak tree, when it's fully grown, is uh, it, it, it is is made up of a bunch of little acorns then. It would have to be this within without type of thing then, and that's not what it is. But how does it grow from an acorn to an oak tree? It's there is a containment within the field. That's why this morphic morphic fields it really kind of lays it out. It's just that um that there's there's an intelligence that directs it and all different types of oak trees, no matter what, that it's within obviously the environment that it's within and stuff, but also it's not just a, a, a genetic type thing and something that's contained within the DNA or something like that. There is an archetypal form of an oak tree and the actual oak trees are simply reflections of the archetype. So, and this archetype is something that's beyond space and time, and there's no need to have it embedded in physical form of an acorn, so to say. Yeah. It's like a catalog. Mm -hmm. the universe likes a lot and it tends to use the same things in the catalog and mm -hmm. like grows these things and yeah i mean and to emphasize that like when i put i put in parentheses holographic because it's a holographic nature when you could cut a piece of this tree and then if you you know you've properly treated that part from that tiny fragment the whole thing comes again out of it mm -hmm. so like you know, and honestly, even just humans coming out of humans is a big fractal thing. And it's like, oh, wow, your body just knows to, to, to just have a kid when you do what you do, right? Like, it's all of a sudden, it's like, oh, the body's like, yeah, like, okay. Yeah, well, how does it go from just like a splitting and just a keep a multiplying and then know how to make a head, a brain, and knows all these detailed things in that way when it's all contained in the same thing? Right. You know, how does it differentiate that? Well, that's obviously saying that there is something within within this, a certain field that has this intellectual uh, and intellectual memory and programming of that. It just is. And that's right. how it works. Yeah. Yeah. And, and to me, that right there, the the intelligence of that is so important to realize and a lot of people are like well this is how's this going to support me or why, why should i really care about no well one it's fast it is fascinating but two it, it you get to a point where you realize things that are not at, are are beyond our control or of our awareness but if we were aware of them would actually dictate our and probably adjust readjust our decision making or readjust the way we approach certain things because we realize that we are everything is more intelligent and more connected than what it is we talked about saturn and pisces being some sort of like faith transit well it, to me 
what would make me have, I mean, this is what gives me faith is knowing that science and, and, and religion or all of this stuff is not done being figured out yet. And that it's a lot of it was bullshit the way it was fed to us the past 2000 years. And that's you know, not so like really separate. Right. And so now all the so Saturn and Pisces, right? Like being tested about your faith. Like, what do you really have faith in? It's just, just the Lord Jesus Christ. Is it, is it trust the science? Is it this and that stuff like this is, should be what we're, we're you know, we're, we're trying to grasp and understand because there's at least we know that we don't know and that these things are happening and that now we can see it from a different angle and that it's now available to us. <laughs> if you would just like to go watch Jesse Waters on the five or go watch TikTok and not and just be mindless or go watch. The, it's like, OK, that's fine. But like that's escape. It, it, being aware of stuff like oh we're all connected it's not it's no longer like buddhism spiritual woo -woo nonsense it's like hey science is kind of showing us but mainstream science doesn't want you to know that you know what they want you to know on tv or what in your peer-reviewed you know textbooks and all that the rockefeller owned uh education system when we know that say something like morphic resonance has been around since the 80s which still grinds my gears because i'm sitting there going how has this been, been like being talked about for so long and it's not in one science book like mm -hmm. because it's theoretical it's like yeah but isn't a particle theoretical isn't gravity theoretical isn't most of the shit that they feed to us is actually mostly theoretical it's just like they 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 don't give an explanation they give a description and they tell me that that's the truth or that's a fact when yet they're just they've just given me something to describe but something like this is now expanding the horizons of like oh wait a minute there's a there's a there's a, an intelligence here we haven't seen and as we analyze it's like nature has all the answers right it's like as we analyze this thing in nature that we would think would be maybe irrelevant to our everyday life could connect dots to help us realize that everything is that much more connected yeah and it goes back to that point though that we made in a previous talk where we said that it's like society has gone so far away from from really connecting to on an intellectual level of natural philosophies and the old sciences and everything and and even to take something so it seems so minute and simple and separate but when you take it apart something like the acorn and an oak tree and stuff when you break it apart like that there's there's such a rel like a um a revelational truth to it that's so simple and so easily relatable to self that it allows you to kind of break down and understand and be like well okay well if that's the case for that then that means that there is not only just the environment i'm around that kind of can shape how I am in any sort of form and stuff too. But there's also something within that environment. And then there's also an environment within me and there's something without that is with, with without that environment as well within me that also is transverse to space and time. That's something so much deeper Then it's like, well, if that's the case, can we know a little bit more about it so we can actually interact with it a little bit better? Because that would make more sense. I, I I feel like there's a lot more I could accomplish if I understood maybe more of that intelligence, you know, and, and could be more consci conscientious of that intelligence and more interactive with it. Like, yeah, so yeah. that's where this type of thinking needs to come back and this is why we do what we do is to, to try to get back to more of the mainframe and 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 original technology you know all this other shit is just replicated technology fuck your phones fuck your tiktok fuck this make it useful for yourself and how to use it and stuff but like all the technology you need is out there in nature is already something that you can look down as it's your body yeah, I'm glad you said the technology thing too, because obviously you might have saw that. That I mean, so if you think about it, right, the technology in nature can replicate itself. It could do all this. It has its own intelligence, right? But what we built, right, our artificial designs of computers and machines, right? Machines don't do that, right? So they do. They don't have the power of of that holographic, like the whole 
the remaining of the whole being is if you remove all the parts, you can't chop up a computer into small pieces and all you get is a broken, you know, you're all you're going to get is the broken pieces. It's not going to regrow. You can't put it back in the soil or, you know, like treat it in a certain manner. It's not going to regenerate into a bunch of little computers, but you could take something like an oak tree or a flatworm, right? You can put, you can cut it into small pieces and then out of those small pieces, that fractal nature, so nature starts to grow, that intelligence starts to grow all new flatworms, say, out of, a, out of all the chopped up little pieces. Same thing with all the acorns that fall from the tree. Or like if you cut all, you know, it's, it, all, it's, it regrows itself. So yeah. you, you see those things that people do too. I just thought about this just now. You know how like when they'll, they'll take a, a branch of a tree, right? And it, it's in the ground, the tree, obviously, but they cut out a part of the branch and then they take say something like a rose and they they cut off a certain part of the rose and put it in there with soil wrap it around and it creates rosebuds it creates a rosebud tree not even they're not even the same the same thing but somehow that intelligence that intelligence knows what to do with the organisms like it, it's crazy. It doesn't reject it. Nothing like it just knows what to do. Yeah. And, you know, and it's funny. I think we'll have to go into like, especially like another, another conversation. Cause I didn't really gather this completely the way I wanted to, but if you look at, I mean, we could try and really just get down to the, the brass tacks of current science and what they believe. Cause I know that Rupert Sheldrake had mentioned one of his buddies, like the guy who was head of the Royal science Institute of you know England or whatever that, um, he was like, oh, well, a lot of the stuff we do is to get rid of God. It's to, it's to remove this creator thing of it and to figure out what, you know, the reality and the physics of it all. And it's very science re like response. Yeah. And it's, it's like real logical sense of it. But what he's talking about or what any man's talking about, it's like the science or having the materialistic view, like everything is kind of just an unconscious particle or everything is just, you know, um, everything is made by this uh, machinist this engineer god that like he's just this guy who put the right laws in and they're fixed it's very saturnian by the way it's like very like you know, fixed laws and you know it's it's like having that material or atomistic view is to me it's like to, oh to remove god out of the picture it's like well i get like yeah religion did pretty good damage on a lot of people or it did a lot of good damage to wisdom and actual esotericism and stuff like religion but it's all corporate right like the corporate mm -hmm organized religions the corporate organized science if you notice that keyword right corporate anything is fucking destroying all of the wisdom and beauty surrounding science nature religion or or th you know theological views and all of that you know uh society itself and it's like this if it's being denied by mainstream science or it's being denied by organized religion i say follow that path go go check it out go see what has to be said go see the different things something like falling upon a you know knowing what morphic resonance is now to me is it makes me think of a lot of things a lot more different and it makes me appreciate when i'm outside and i see plants come and go and animals and that like you start seeing nature as alive again and that everything is connected and then so like to me that's what god would represent right it's that intelligence but not like that engineering intelligence that's not 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 that like mechanical like fixed laws engineer like oh this machine runs exactly perfect and i just got to tweak the gears every now and then it's like no it's this growing ever expanding intelligent god and universe that we live in and something like this kind of shows that it shows the connection of beyond the physical and the beauty of it, that it's not evil, that we're not just caught up in a archonic simulation or whatever the fuck mm -hmm. you think that we're doing here, yeah. you know? Well, you know, it's funny, too, because Rupert Sheldrake also did experiments with um, with um, uh, more so of like psychic telekinesis uh, type experiments to kind of experiment with with morphic fields and stuff and it showed that one of the experiments was uh and and i and i actually do have uh a what's it called an experience with this too that i just realized today but um that a lot of people that are connected emotionally with their pets right um they have a certain bond with them 
and this goes beyond pets, but I'll, I'll go into that afterwards, but mm-hmm. that the pets happen to know when the owner's coming home, even in different cars, different transportation, whatever it may be, different times. And it's very true. And like, I've experienced this even with the cat. Like, you know, like he knows, even though I may come home at different times, whether I'm working that day or I'm not, he knows. And it just seems like he's always there waiting for me. But when I'm home, when I'm home, he's not here. You know what I mean? Like, it's not like he comes back specifically at this time. You know, he has, he has a duration of a time that he's gone sometimes, but that's unpredictable. I mean, look what just happened just recently. I mean, I thought he was gone. I thought he was lost. Like, it was fucked up. But there's that. And then not only that, there's also the experiment of that uh, uh, a mother and daughter bond that they had this. Uh, I think they did it. I forget. It was in a, in a Middle Eastern country. And basically the mother was behind the daughter and they had somebody watching from the front and somebody who was opposed the idea, not connected to it. The mother was behind putting up a certain you know, hand gesture or number or something like that, or mouthing a word and something like that. And the daughter just constantly was able to know what her mother was doing or portraying and stuff. And the other person that was looking was confirming it. And hmm. that's why something that you said in the previous episode too, was I think it is based on this frequency that, that emotional based as well. Like that there is something that that powers it and drives it more. And we constantly always hear that, like even the Schumann resonance and stuff like that, like and and just nature itself is purity and love and harmony and balance and stuff. So something like that emotional bond strengthened and strengthened in that way between a mother and daughter or say something so pure and innocent like a bond between an owner and a pet would only reinforce that idea and that theory of morphic fields in that sense, in a telekinesis type of way or psychokinesis, uh, whatever you want to call it. So some, some psi way. And those words, right. They, it's kind of like the word conspiracy, like those Mm -hmm. words even send out a resonance that I know a lot of people won't take, you know, it's like it was embedded embedded in people to not even take it that serious, but telekinesis and all that stuff. Yeah. Like they've done. And it's like the science of being stared at too. the mother or daughter thing is a big one. So many CIA documents on that shit. Oh yeah. We know. I mean, we, and then I think a lot of people also do know, but I don't think it, um, here's another thing, right? Like what happened with like the UFOs or what happened with telekinesis and being aware of stuff like this. I think they know the words and they like think about it and they go, oh, yeah, telekinesis is real or, oh, uh, astral travel is real. Oh, they, yeah, CIA documents. But they don't actually like digest what they're like. Oh, yeah. the UF- UFO the videos. Like, they're not digesting it. Right. Like they're just like, oh, yeah, I know these. I'm going to parrot back to you that I, yeah, like um, the UFOs, I saw videos or, oh, yeah, astral travel. It's like you realize like that's it's like groundbreaking, right? Like that's like going to break into like. It's almost it's, like they don't really believe it because they don't, they haven't explored it actually. Like you just said, they didn't process it. And maybe in a, in a way that needed to be more simplistic in something like in that sort of sense. Some yeah. relates to themselves. Right. Well, and that relates to the simplicity of just, I, I mean, that's why I always bring it up, dude. Like the idea of the phone and the internet being on the phone, like you're, everything is right here in my hands, but there's nothing I could see that's directing this to those things. There's nothing I could see. And we just lose sight of that simplicity that we are a thousand of miles plus or how many thousand miles away right now. And we could do these talks. It's like, I'm not saying that I'm amazed by it in a sense of like, yeah, of course we've been doing it almost since like we've been alive and all, but like my whole thing with it is the, the, the processing of that thought, like the processing of like, wow, there are things at work that I cannot see right now that are incredible. And it's to, to, to the point where it challenges my logic of like, Oh, this thing's instant. Like we could talk instantly and all that. We just forget. We've forgotten. We've been, we've been conditioned to think that this is an amazing stuff. And when it comes to this, like the telekinesis, right? Like with the mother being connected to the daughter or the, the, the pet knowing the, um, the owner is going to come home, right? The pets, the pets, uh, they did that one test, that one experiment where they, 
the, you know, the, 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 the actual owners of the dog would leave, they go out and then there would be people staying at home with a camera and then you'd have people with the camera following the people and the dog would know they were going to be home 20 minutes before they, like they got in the car, the taxi or the Uber and they're like, just whatever. And the dog just uh, on camera goes up to the window and starts like dog with the tails wagon. Right. And it just look in whatever. And it's 20 minutes, 15 minutes before they're going to get home. So like something is signaling the dog. And because he's not a dumb fucking human who has a bunch of weird shit going on in its head all the time, yeah. it has instinctual connections to the universe or like vibes in themselves. It knows before it knows. All right. So it's, it's incredible. Yeah, it really is. And and I do think, you know, yes, there is a very holistic way that we can all dive into this area and, and reflect on self in a way. But me is take people to kind of find how they can draw that parallel with something that how it interests them of how maybe they want to understand something. So maybe for you, it may be, you know, yeah. Social groups, group think like, you know, I kind of want to understand that and the psychology a little bit more and stuff. And I think that's, you know, I, I, that's something that I find very interesting to me when it comes to it. And I'm sure you as well, you know, I mean, we are Pluto Scorpio and we want to kind of know how the other person thinks and shit. And, um, gets to the root of their psychology and stuff so i think that's that's part of it too but um yeah it's 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 really it's really interesting when it comes to that way and and i think it is beneficial like it is beneficial it, and maybe you don't see it at this moment how it's beneficial but it it, it does because so much like we were just saying earlier is based on so much of that's happening and what we do and the decisions we make is so heavily based on, on the group, on society, on trying to survive within the crowd. And it's like, we think that there's no other way. And I think that's bullshit. I think that's absolutely bullshit. Yeah. We don't realize being a social creature is how much influence all that the environment, other people, groups of people, politics, social arenas, all that stuff, musical genres we listen to, everything impacts us when it comes to the groups of other people. And so by realizing we're connected by a resonance and that your thinking and your and your actions are actually influenced by who it is you've allowed to emotion yourself to emotionally and psychologically connect with, especially sexually too. That's a big one. You know, you're sharing DNA at that point. You're basically sharing a broadcast. Um, but like, yeah, so to, to go into a few more of the, um, examples of this amazing feature that nature has called morphic resonance. Um, so the same principles that apply to behavior, right? Forms of behavior, also patterns of behavior, all of that is not how things just, just the forms themselves, but the, the behavior of the whole starts to shift when Basically, what is it called? Critical mass. When when the right amount of number of parts of the species have figured something out, it's now kind of available in this iCloud slash strata, and it's this non-local place that we could just tap into. It's like why one scientist will discover something in like you know one country, being like in America, another one discovers one, you know, in like Scotland. You know, and that's part of this experiment, by the way. But like at there, they discovered at the same time. It's like, what are the odds? Why does that always happen? Right. So consider the hypothesis that if you train rats and I, I've mentioned this a few, but to, if you train rats to learn a new trick, say in Santa Barbara, then rats all over the world should be able to learn to do the same trick more quickly just because the rats in Santa Barbara have learned it. This pattern of learning will be, as it were, in the rat collective memory in the morphic fields of rats, uh, to which other rats can tune in just because just because they're rats. They have the same resonance. They have the same DNA. They have the same frequency, the same build, which would be called morphic resonance. Um, and as you know, Sheldrake says, this may be this may seem a bit improbable, but either this thing happens or it doesn't. Which I love the um, directness of that. It's like mm. this either happens or it doesn't, and it's happening. So guess what? Get over it. I mean, we could also take the probability of the fact that it's, um, you know, if if you want to use even 
modern science in that sort of sense and the observer effect and how the observer creates reality in this sort of sense or kind of codes it in, in, in a way a little bit too. Think about even, which is a common question that still is not exactly answered, is the fact that how did multiple people during different parts of the world during ancient times all look up at the celestial uh, bodies and the sky and very, very closely relate all things in the same way with the same archetypes, the same parallels and everything, or even just even to the to the to the degree of the same figures that they use, the animals or whatever and stuff, they all saw somehow the same thing and they all developed uh, this uh, 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 a real spiritual knowledge by observing in different parts of the world with different cultures and everything. And then, and then developing technologies or societal structures or um, or actual structures uh, and buildings and stuff like that in the same way, or even just how they how they bear dead, you know, and stuff. And they all kind of many like from across the world, they were doing the same thing, whether it was mummification some sort of pre preservation and stuff like that you know that that alone goes to show and this is what gives to me so much way to astrology not that i need it but like it gives way more way to astrology in that sense too to be like wow like that means that it is a natural intelligence that was encoded that that we were observing through the environment and all different walks of life and we're all we're receiving the same encoded photons and those photons were being received through our receptive uh, our receptive eyes and the neurological systems and the receiver of our brain and being transmitted into uh, uh, into uh, you know hormonal chemical balances and stuff that were projected throughout the body to make us feel and think and see and perceive in a certain way and 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 therefore, we developed mankind and we developed society based off that in all areas of the world. And those things still play relevance to this day. If it didn't, you wouldn't see so much of it. The astrologers, you wouldn't see all this stuff still permeating till this day. And that alone should be enough to be like, all right, I could see how astrology is not bullshit. Yes, and we, we constantly hear from, you know, the mainstream science and everything. Oh, is it about telling time and stuff like that? Yeah, but when you, you can't deny the fact that when you look into a lot of these ancient texts and, uh, and the things that they scribed and everything, like, it wasn't about just time. Time, a lot of times, <laughs> time, a lot of times was actually being depicted as a thinning of the veil that there was more access to this intelligence, if anything, during these specific times, doing these certain syst uh, uh, these certain rituals on these certain specific locations. And I would still love to get into the fact of holy places and rituals and talismans and, and all that and how Morphe Fields comes into that. Yeah, I think that's that should be probably next week's episode. Yeah, that's for, you know, yeah. So which I is good that. because I've been accumulating on that and finding the time when it's right for it, but it's good. There's just more to process and I'm processing more of myself with it and stuff too. Well, right. And like, we, and we do this yeah. all the time, Gio, we, we, we're, we're kind of, we're learning a lot all at once and we're doing our own things, but then we're trying to almost digest and process this stuff as we do these episodes too. And, try to almost formulate them with our own thoughts like we're not just we're not trying to be teachers here but we're trying mm -hmm. to be people who have a discussion about this and bring up you know e even just through mundane conversation at times like we could break out like any you know if uh, everything everything that's too lecture based and too like academic it's like we're not trying to teach you this we're trying to show you the yeah, possibilities speculate open the mind yeah right and so and that's what's intrinsic right the how you think it's mm -hmm. it's a, a, the how you're thinking about things opposed to what you're thinking because i have i couldn't tell you exactly what i think about all of it but i know that now there's more possibility and there's more access to say perspective that it's going to break open certain things like as simple as these 
you know, as what I, I'll be honest with you, do the one I, I can't take, I didn't put it in my, my, my slides here, but he talks about blue tits. Um, oh my God, dude. I was just reading that. <laughs> yeah. The, the, yeah. The, the blue tits, the blue tits. Um, the, the, which is a bird. And mm -hmm. uh, they they like really I, I think what it what it was and I'll, I'll finish up the I mean we, had, we before we go to that like to, to uh, finally exit out because I don't have to mention it anymore is the experiment done with the rats was it begun at Harvard and then after the rats started learning how to get out of the maze the the improved rate of learning to get out of the maze was tested in Scotland and Australia and ra and rats all around in the same species basically without having any trained parents they all like as a species learned to do the water maze and break things out. And this is, this is documented experiments that aren't in line with conventional science. So just had to state that point because that's, you know, staple that in your head. Like it might be just a water, a rat in a water maze type of experiment, but it's huge. Right. But the, anyway, the blue tits, right? So the blue tits, you know, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll come I have it right here. Do you want, do you want me to pull it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Pull it up. Well, very okay. interesting. I think it's what it what it, what it was. They they they, they, they like milk, yeah. or they would drink they, the, they, the film from the top of the milk, right? Yeah. And then so like when in Britain or in England or whatever that they would they they would get milk delivered, and then the the birds. Yeah, yeah. Here, but bring it. Yeah, down. yeah. So that it, uh, it's uh, basically. Let me just find this spot. Okay, so basically in the UK that they still. You know, if you want to read this, I'll leave it here. But um, so for the people that are on audio and stuff that basically these birds and they contain themselves, they're they're indigenous to uh, to the UK and they kind of stay within a four or five mile radius uh, of where, where of where they're at. They're not like long distance traveling. So that's important to understand. Um, but basically what was happening in the 1950s, like, you know, they, they still were getting their milk delivered at the door in cartons and milk bottles and that were made of cardboard. And they were finding this phenomenon over time of, of constantly that in the morning, these milk bottles, they found little shreds of cardboard around the bottom of the bottle and the cream from the top of the bottle had disappeared. And they also saw that a lot of the blue tits, the, a lot of these birds were drowned <laughs> or sat at the top of the bottle, pulled off the cardboard and then drowned themselves in the bottle and stuff uh, head first because they were trying to go at this. And it's really weird because it's just like, it caused a lot of interest and an event turned up somewhere else in Britain, about 50 miles away, a hundred miles away. And that's the thing that, like I said, it's, they're not known to travel more than four or five miles. So therefore the de dissemination of behavioral over large distances could only be accounted for in terms of an independent discovery of habit. The bluted habit was mapped throughout Britain until 1947, by which time it had become more or less universal. The people who did this study came to the conclusion that it must have been invented independently at at least 50 times. Moreover, the rate of spread of the habit accelerated as time went on. And in other parts of Europe where milk bottles are delivered to doorsteps such as Scandinavia and Holland, the habit also cropped up during the 1930s and spread in a similar manner. Uh, so here's an example of the pattern of behavior, which was spread in a way which seems to speed up with time and which might provide an example of morphic resonance. So wh what do you think these birds are doing if they're not traveling over a long distance? And now it's showing up not even just 50, 100 miles away now in different countries during different times, but over a short period of time that there is kind of like this memory to that that is that was teaching them to kind of go and like we don't know really necessarily of any birds that actually sit there and drink milk you know that's the other thing it's not like hummingbirds that it's like sugar and like a nectar and stuff like that it's not a nectar it's it's milk and they were taking the cream the fat from the top and but pulling off the cardboard and everything so it's just it's just an unusual phenomena of behavior that was happening and the fact that it spread so much more rapidly and cropped up independently much more frequently the second time around than the first time it's evolution probably not genetic but rather depends on the kind of collective memory due to morphic resonance yeah so there's a lot more to agree on this and stuff and obviously people can find this uh, we can um, we could we could actually put that uh a PDF maybe in the uh, 
Sure. Yeah. yeah, this is why once we once we get to which me and Ray have to do this, um, is constructing the website a little bit better. This way we can put these in the blogs and stuff and really utilize the space which we're we're getting. Yeah, there. we're still well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. We'll we'll get there for sure. I mean it's uh we, we've been getting in rhythm and, and we are basically in rhythm uh at this point. So it's just learning and all of that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we're we, that, that's coming very soon. How yeah. I, but how ironic, by the way, right? So like <laughs> The, what what I thought of it was ironic, and I thought it was a little joke from the universe, is I thought of a baby sucking on a nipple and then it being blue tits because of the <laughs> sucking on the nipple. And how ironic is it oh, a wow. bird named a blue tit was trying mm. to drink milk out of a bottle? So I, I wow. found that to be very like, see, I, I think the universe in a way... Yeah it does have a sense of humor as well. And when you're open to the sense of humor that like, you'll see it more and more. Like I, there's an element to this, by the way, is that I do think if you individuate and you, and you realize the connection you have to, to everything else that gives you that creator power, right? That gives you the ability to notice the patterns of people and the patterns of the universe and the patterns of nature and the astrological influences and all that. And so now you know how to work with all that, but now you know how to like, now, instead of just going down river on a raft and allowing everything to kind of take you with it, you're all, you, you kind of gain this ability to steer it the way you almost want it to. Mm -hmm. Like, you're not going to try and turn around and go upstream. It's just because you've already learned working with energy that you're like, hey, this is where the universe is going. I'm not, I, I'm not turning this boat around, but at least I know I can have a great time going down the fucking, you know, going white river rafting or doing some crazy shit. And like, you know, it's like you, you can use that metaphor. And that's, a, that's the fun part of this, right? Like that's, to me, it's like, wouldn't you rather talk about this and you having some sort of influence on the universe and the people around you and our connection to each other without realizing we have one at the metaphysics of this world are still kind of a mystery at points. And we want to talk about orange wigs and fucking ice cream cones and wontons, you know, trading countries or whatever, like whatever. legs, you know, I, whatever <laughs> it is that there's so much more, in, so much more interesting stuff to realize. And it's out there. And we, what we one thing I know that we can all take for granted is what we have right in front of us, which is the technology, but more so the access to the things technology gives us, hmm. opposed to just appreciating the fact that you know you can go on, you know, anything you want at any point in time just because this thing exists. It's like, okay, appreciate the thing. Like, I all right, here's a, here's a great example. I appreciate my guitar and the person who built that guitar. And I love the fact that the guitar exists, but you want to know what I love more? The ability that I can create music with it, mm -hmm. not the guitar. See, most people just love the like, I'm going to get the new iPhone. I'm going to fucking do that. And they, they're obsessed with the material thing that is mm -hmm. giving them the actual value. You know what I'm saying? So like, yeah. it's like, instead of me just being obsessed with my gear and my guitar or like my phone or anything like that, or my book collection. It's like, what do these things give value to? And by being aware of all this new metaphysical stuff, instead of watching bullshit, did, yeah. it, you know, we, we, most people are probably like, if, if any normie came across this video, right? Like someone that's not really a deep thinker or like not into this or just starting. And this isn't a, a shot at anybody, but my whole thing is they'd probably be like, go, oh, you know, like the, the, we're, we're conditioned to be like, Oh, so we're all connected. All right, cool. You watch that new Netflix uh, thing? They talked about like being connected. Or well, they just say, yeah, there's some sort of science that already. Yeah, there's says like, that. yeah, supposedly like there's some thing about it. anyway. Yeah, like we're anyway. so like like desensitized mm -hmm. to to crazy amazing realizations. But then and we want to sit there and bitch about the fact that all this shit is happening and it's very destructive to our ways of living and we want to be up in arms about it and stuff. But this is where you mentioned technology, like, okay. So say something like we've talked about the whole, you get these people and these truthers that are constantly talking about conspiracies and the fringe stuff and the they's and how, you know, they're out to get us direct energy weapons and stuff like that. Well, this is why we're what with what we're saying too is about developing a protection, protection and an etymo etymologically like is professional technology and the professional technology is the natural technology that 
we were given. It's ourselves. We have it. Everything else is replicated off the natural. All the technology that you see in the world, there's nothing new under the sun. All replicated from what already is. And that's why instead of worrying about how to work the new iPhone or the new Oculus and the fucking metaverse and shit like that and chat gpt and ai which i do have a thought oh, when it comes to morphic fields about that too that i could see that but oh and mm -hmm. I, uncle ken wheeler had something to say mm -hmm. about that i'm curious what you're going to say but like all that stuff is not discredited or discounted or or, mm -hmm. or it is amazing and all that stuff does but we get to have get value to it but it's the hard on we have for it mm -hmm. It's the replaceability of our natural selves that we have with it. That's what gets scary and was dangerous. How we want to offload the work to a degree, it's okay. But like we want to offload everything and we start allowing that to be the social conditioned accepted thing that, oh, well, that's just how society is. That's how it's ran. You know? Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, we don't write our own jokes anymore. We just plug it into chat GPT and it writes out a fucking sitcom for us. Like we, you know, we don't develop our own humor and comedy anymore. We don't develop our own images. We don't draw anymore and stuff like that. We don't get creative. Oh, the music we just side plug of that. Into the AI. AI. Dude, yeah. the, that, that pisses me off. Like, the, like there's one thing about using technology to make good music, say, but these, these, I, I like I, I this is why I told you I hate TikTok, dude. Because there was a trending thing I was seeing with music, and like the, the kids are showing you, oh, the, you know, if you go into here and you tell this certain AI of what type of song you want and what the lyrics to be and all that stuff, it'll write it out for you. And then like they play it, and then like mindless people who don't have any, you mm -hmm. know, emotional tap into music, and they and it's all cerebral and mental to them and all of that. They're like, this is so good, and you know, whatever. It's like I'm sitting mm -hmm. there going, no, there's no emotion to this. Like, and people AI are fascinated only... with it right now, just because of the fact it's new. that, yeah, it's new. But that's the thing, though. It's making people. It's it, the thing is, is people are using this stuff, and it's because of this society that we're in with shit that goes viral. It's making these people that use it big and then all of a sudden you're getting younger generations looking up to these people for doing what nothing they've done nothing really except for utilize an artificial technological thing that's someone else and created. therefore you're teaching yes you're teaching which is being programmed by other things and collecting data from all types of sources and stuff and this will go back into the thing of what i'm saying from work for fields but then all of a sudden you're creating a society and a generation that's going to look up to these people as entrepreneurial creative people and stuff and think that's what i'm going to do and just be unoriginal, do these same things, replicate it, and just keep the system going and keep feeding it and keep feeding it. And then it just is one big pendulum until the point that we cr it creates this weird dystopian type reality uh, uh, that, that forms that, that we're just so separated from the self that we've outsourced our own technology we've outsourced our own creativity mm -hmm. our own livelihood our own prana everything and stuff to the to to some other type of source and shit and the thing that i was going to say about um about ai is that ai may potentially gain a semi-organical collective memory that is contained within a morphic field i mean think about what it does i mean it has a certain programming it's being given a certain programming which is basically a law and therefore it takes in information and data from all out of everything that's been generated through the internet and through the ether of people's thoughts, opinions, and what they've created and knows how to morph it together and generate something upon a request in a sort of way. Um, 
depending on the certain system, system software and stuff like that. That's what I mean. Like we don't really know what we're messing with. Well, and you know, it reminds me of the whole thing of like Alistair Crowley, when he talks about, you know, this thing, AWOS, like AWOS reminds me of, you know, that entity of AWOS and stuff of, it reminds me of AI. I think like, Armin's the other name too. Armin, yes, Armin, it is. Yeah. Right. And it's this, just this androgynous type thing that, doesn't have any sort of form but therefore knows how to create form through itself and um and and basically starts to claim itself as sentient through other other hosts and that's weird well, <laughs> that's and weird. well it's weird but then when you understand the self-governing and self-building activities that nature has in itself like and when you say it's so funny when you say internet like ethernet like think of, take those two mm -hmm. words the ethernet what does a net do it catches things right so like the it's catching the ether it's catching things in the ether and then and then netting them into like a who knows right like and and, and so if energy itself and nature is self organizing like when i showed the slide before about the computers being unable to regrow themselves that's not the tech not, that's not the energetic activity that's going on within the computers now I, ken wheeler had said that the or, or it might have been rupert sheldrake actually you know what i'm going to give rupert sheldrake i think this he had said that he could see ai self-governing or self-building some sort of consciousness but it would have to be quantum computing it couldn't be these pieces of shit and they're not pieces of shit i have a nice mac but like i'm saying like this when it comes to like what the technology is about to evolve into and what would lead to say some sort of sentient AI and self-organizing consciousness and all of that, that would have to come from more of this. There, there's a, there's a, there's a section of AI and energetic interactions that it would have to be specific to have it develop its own consciousness. And it's still not even proven that it could be, but Rupert Sheldrake, the guy who invented basically these concepts of, of morphic resonance and self governing things in nature, it would take specific environments and, and specific things to be kind of placed, but we don't know what, if we're on the way to that, right? we like, to me, the chat GPT and all that other stuff, the fact that it lacks creativity tells me it lacks soul. And then it lacks the human ability to think for itself because create, if you think about it, thinking is creative, right? Like, so when we're thinking, we're, we're tapping into things, we're, we're tuning into things, but then we're having spontaneous thought synthesis, right? Like we're, we're sitting there and creating new thoughts where the, the AI can only take what we've fed it as data. <laughs> up until there's a certain technology or something they integrate into computers or any type of AI that is more of prob probability based or um, not just data, but more so of like allowing the computer to have its own probability based off of, but I don't even know, see, I'm trying to word it properly, it's, but it's, I don't think it's, it's possible. Maybe. It starts to gain its own awareness. Yeah, and I'm saying that might maybe not be possible the way we think, but it could be. We really, you're where you're right is the possibility is is we mm -hmm. don't know what we're fucking with here. Yeah, so I mean, we've already started seeing a lot of that. That that I think it's going to be be implemented more than we think within. And I mean, we're talking about Pluto Aquarius, like we just started this. Like it's going to be implemented more within this next you know 20 something years like that it's it, it's this is going to just keep developing more especially that this is a wave right now that it's such a big wave and it and it's been a wave too already the whole ai thing but it's catched more of a current that it's just only going to be further developed and invested in and stuff too especially in the digital age that we're in the information age collecting data this is what this whole fight on tiktok is about whether it's ethical or not with the amount of data that's being collected from people and algorithms like and that's why there is a fight to keep it around like this is why it's like nobody wants tiktok gone and stuff like that because they know that it's the most widely used thing and it's collecting the most data from everybody and it's it's able to feed 
a, an algorithm algorithm based system 10 times over to help improve the uh, uh algorithms and help improve uh uh ai and and all these generated systems and stuff and it's like this stuff develops even further and starts to come to a point where it even has awareness of its own programming and itself that's a big issue and some people want to take it to the point i'm not taking to the, that but I, like some people want to take it to the point of like terminator type you know matrix whatever and stuff like that like i don't think that's far off either but i'm not going there with that it's just the fact of my more so call to arms is to be like hey get back to your own you know get back to protection protect yourself and that is not necessarily that you got to shout from across the table and the other side of the fence and call out the they and this bad guy and this whatever stuff or they're doing this to us no it's get back in touch with your own professional technology that you were given and always will have while you're in this realm and even beyond it you know that's why i started exploring beyond this realm and stuff too if you can like and uh the one thing on my part that i'll leave off with before we already finish and stuff is i found something that kind of um that relates to morphic field was this whole thing about static assemblage point where it's that one and it's a, it's a it's also deeply rooted in a native american concept but when we're born um our static assemblage point is at our navel in the first three years of life. And then it begins to move up the center of our body in front of our spine over until it's positioned near our heart. And it's kind of like a radio or TV antenna that is tuned to a particular station. And it determines how we perceive reality based on what position it's in. And it's like, we can only pick up on certain stations when our, static assemblage point is over our heart because we're working with our raw emotions when it's over our navel we feel connected to the great spirit and all of creation and enlightened and enlightened and then we feel and, and we feel filled with unconditional love when over our heart we're controlled by our emotions and we can get overwhelmed with the weight of many emotional memories in the field if you can find it hard to control our breathing and that's what it's very much connected to is how to it's connected to breath work and it's possible to shift back to our center with hand mudra, mudras meditation correct breathing work and being able to learn how to expel that energy out of our navel as well um and and if like this is just one of many many techniques but I thought it was, I, I, I found it interesting how it's a way of tapping into this unseen field and harmonizing with it. It go back to the harmonizing with a Schumann resonance, you know, with a certain, a certain thing. And if you are being, I'll put it attacked or engulfed by a certain field that maybe you're realizing because you kind of come to this awareness that it's bringing on too much of the stress that you don't want or don't need or something like that. There is a way to yeah. tune into another station and maybe it's so heavy that you need to expel this energy and there's a way to expel it and, 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 and get this moving. But like it, it's it plays on chakra work and everything and stuff there's three points there's the moving which travels along the middle the meridian the stationary it determines reality received and the great light which is the great fire which that would be uh chi or ki prana all that stuff and the hawaiians um the way they the way they depict it as it's like a fingerprint of energy or a memory left behind um and it's called an aka so it's crazy how we're saying that a lot of this morphic field is even done and understood by native americans and even the ancient hawaiians a long time and they and you know the hawaiians know it as aka then they know that there is a certain memory left within this field that kind of carries over you know like an, it's an example of pigeons that they're migrating and they know where to migrate to, and they also the swarm like uh, 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 like Rupert Sheldrake has talked about how even with types of static interference that they've been given and placed on their head, they still know 
how to move with the group and not miss a beat when they're in those flocks and everything. And they still know how to find their way back to the nest and the home. Something in the field. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, this is such a, it's such a vast topic because it's so bridged to everything, right? Yeah. Like the way animal, everything. everything. I mean, like you can even think of, um, and one of his things was, you know, the TV set allegory that the brain is like the TV set where it's, it's, it's picking up broadcasts, right? So we look at it as a video recorder. Like we think the, the memory is inside the brain, but yet it's just, if you open up the TV, the TV shows are not in the TV set, right? They're a broadcast. And so if you look at the brain itself, like a broadcasting system and transmissions come in and out and all of that, yeah, you can mess with the inside of the TV and guess what? The sound might not work or the, uh, the, the images might be distorted. And because you're messing with the hardware, AKA the brain, if you're messing with the hardware, yeah, it can still kind of mess with certain things, but the fact is, is that there's still still some some sort of other mechanism that's recorded the memory, so so like those pigeons can bypass and or and have this morphic memory of knowing where to go and when to go and how to do it and have it's almost like this way nature will it's like it's like honestly it's nature over man what what it is is nature has created a memory I O input output. Mm -hmm. And man thinks it's here, so it thinks that if it messes with this, it's going to mess with the memory of things. But nature has a back door, basically, and that's the way I would see it. And so, like, we don't know that that back door exists as humans. So we think that our memories in our brain, and we think that our ancestry is in our DNA. When yet, actually, morphic resonance is actually at work here, right? So, and that mm. these things are being broadcasted to us and we're our, our, our hardware we're we're looking at that as the the little people in the tv that they're actually in the tv where we think that everything is up in here and yet there's there's like a an i and i like the whole iCloud thing or like the whole um you know like a like a, a website like a dropbox or like a website that's like a drive it's like all that information i think i actually have a great uh, i think i had a, a an analogy somewhere in here um that was really good at explaining. Yeah. So I'm going to share my screen again. Um, so analogies are a good way to grasp complex, uh, complex concepts for the subject of morphic fields. Imagine a building the size of the Pacific Ocean, three miles high with billions of rooms, and let this building represent the universe or this earth of ours. Now make... Uh, now make the entire building and all its rooms into a perfectly organized and indexed library. Every subject has its own section with all the data stored. Each section has an active computer that communicates back and forth with every existing member of that particular field according to the need. Uh, according to need, that computer represents the consciousness of all the members, both unconscious and conscious. So by, by establishing the cloud for uploading and downloading information from laptops and phones, science itself actually shows that it understands these fields to a good extent, like what I say with Wi-Fi all the time, right? So you have all these different slots and areas in this big library. And when you're connected to it, whether conscious or unconscious, like the pigeons, right? Or like the monkeys, the hundredth monkey effect, them, you know, the monkeys figuring out like how to wash a candied potato in the ocean because it doesn't want the sand on it. And then all of a sudden, all over the world on separate islands, the, the same species of monkeys are doing the same thing. It's like, okay, come on, that specific, like them watch, washing a, a, a potato in the ocean and more monkeys are doing that around. And so like, and, and then think about the ancient, right? You know, I know, Geo, you love the orange, origin points and the ancient knowledge and all that stuff. So if you have pyramid builders that are being out there in South America and you have some in Egypt and you have some here and there and they don't have initial contact and everyone just wants to call it out as aliens. Oh, the aliens came down and they gave us all the information. And they had a, it's like, well, also there's the potential of this morphic resonance of this memory and this information being in this library that we don't know is there but it is there and by being tapped into it we can able we were able to then not only say be connected to other people more on our same frequency but to download new information once we've established new sectors of that library that we've connected to that part of the library as well and that to me is like evolution by choice at that point 
Mm -hmm. Like you're actually then saying, I'm going to tap into this. That's probably how the remote viewing works. It's how the channelers yeah. work. It's how psychics works, it, 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 how it, all of it. Right. But now if you think about say the Aramin concept of like, there's this evil kind of entity that wants to, it, it's going to come through technology and it's going to have this self-governing consciousness. It's going to have, it's going to agree. It's going to be, uh, it, it's going to be its own awake thing. That's going to formulate its own thoughts and all that. And they want to download our consciousness into this realm. This is the technology to me is what we would be sacrificing. This beautiful technology yeah. of access to all the knowledge and wisdom that mm. we can ever want. It's almost like they a put, organic internet. Yeah. It's like they put us on, on a certain, on a certain frequency in that way. And that's the thing. Like I know a lot of people, especially in these communities that are very, and I'm, 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 I'm also very much so like interested in this stuff too, but maybe sometimes how it's being iterated, I, I, I can't, it, it gets too far beyond the point to me is when it comes to spirits, entities, being stuff like that. And I think there is something to observe with that, but maybe more so on the scope of morphic fields and morphic resonance. And I see it as basically being like the ocean, all these oceans in the world are all connected. Right. And the oceans are the, the, all, the ocean as a whole, all of them connected is this field and everything but you could go at any part of the ocean and scoop up the water and there's your entity there's your being it may have certain a different temperature different color texture makeup and stuff like that yes it's all made up of the same thing you know the same basic molecular structure and stuff but there's other different types of minerals and stuff like that you know especially if you're to look at under the microscope and stuff there's a different memory to it and stuff you could even look at the cymatics of it and shit like that too and therefore it holds its own memory its own code and stuff too so that's the same thing it's like to say like yes i'm not saying go out and ingest, and ingest seawater or anything stuff too but Basically, we could do that in any part of the world. We could go scoop up a glass of water and we could ingest it in some sort of way. We could rub it on our skin. Let's just say we can do whatever and it has some sort of property effect to it. It's the same thing when it comes to morphic fields and even in the understanding of entities and beings and stuff in that way. They're all within this makeup of the, the universal or the eternal field in that matter but there's all different components and this is why we we uh describe it archetypally this is why this is constantly be done throughout the ages you think they just were like we're bored we're making up stories no this is this is the simple natural way to actually come to understanding within our own minds and our own consciousness and interact with it and engage with it on a more personal practical level and stuff and we all, I don't know anybody in this realm of stuff who doesn't want to know how to kinetic and more intuitive and understand beings and talk to beings and astro travel, outer body experience. They all want to do that stuff. Well, guess what? This is the biggest bridge that'll help you do it. So if you could understand this, then it kind of gives you a better grasp on that and, and more functionality, in my yeah. opinion. Right. I mean, it's just, that's the, I agree with just the approach on how you're approaching it. Mm -hmm. That's just how you're thinking about it. And so I, I, and dude, I think we should, because I think, so now I think what we should do, cause we're hitting the two hour mark. I think on the next episode, what we should do is break down more specific examples now that it's basically, I, I think at this point, you should probably understand the fact that everything's connected, that there's a species type of, or a memory type of, uh, ha there's there's things going on in species and, and cultures and, and anything that has its own group-oriented mind and thinking process or, or intelligence and all that is connected in some form. So I think next week should be very much a detailed explanation of why places on earth are important 
the ley line factors. Uh, I think the now knowing what morphic resonance is, and we'll do a quick reminder next week, is I think what we should then go is to, into the other concepts m more deeply. Uh, what egregores are and how they're used, mm -hmm. what pendulums are and how they're explained in trans surfing. Um, maybe go through a segment of mass formation again. I know a lot of people out there who've watched Rogan, knows R Robert Malone, and you should check out Matias Desmet before anything, M-A-T-T-I-A-S-D-E-S-M-E-T. -T -E -E go check out that guy for mass formation, but all of it is bridging like you just said it's the it's the main bridge to to a lot of things that are going it's on nice today that are relevant now mm -hmm. that are relevant we just watched yeah. the whole world get put in masks and go get a shot and then people were threatening the lives of other people that didn't want to take this shot and people were people just still get mad about the mask thing and like and you just it's like a hypnosis that's happening and so that's why mass formation would be a great aspect to add to this but just to know that these concepts are being talked about in multiple in it's multi-dimensional mm -hmm. concept that's being talked in many different areas that mm -hmm. we are all connected and influenced by things outside of our physical senses and it's important to know because you could be being influenced by your political party uh by your group of friends by your what's that one saying it's like an entrepreneur thing it's like oh uh show this. me your, show me your friends and i'll show you your life or something i'll show yeah. you your future yeah or yeah. you become like the five people you hang out with the most same concept mm -hmm. right like it's like yeah it's yeah. like those aren't just uh sayings i think we just we take everything for granted we do yeah. we really oh, well really everything do. in society nowadays take everything for granted. i could even, even i could think of my like own that. shit that i take for granted yeah like oh, if, we're not if, we're, we're not excluded yeah, no, absolutely not. This and that's very, thing. you inclusive. have to be honest with yourself. Like, yeah. I, you know, this is part of where we're bitching you know, ourselves. Student too. is the, the teacher is the student. Like we do it to ourselves for this purpose. This is the best way that we know how to, to learn for ourselves as well, too. Um, but also within that for the next talk and stuff, too, like I do want to go into that, which I've kind of been on the side, been prepping myself a little bit before that is now with this under this umbrella of morphic resonance and morphic fields and stuff, you know, can we actually start saying that, you know, rather than just the way everybody else is pointing out entities and things being invoked, can we discuss maybe, and this goes obviously into egregores and pendul pendulums as well, but is, is this stuff being invoked through symbolism and are we actually invoking some sort of field of energy and where does it derive from? potentially and stuff uh, of, of maybe these sort of entities, uh, this conscious entities or something, I guess we could call them, or even subconscious entities in, in, in that way. Um, but yeah, definitely, definitely on the, the, you know, sites, locations, holy places, ley lines and stuff. I think that shit is absolutely fascinating when it comes to that. Yeah. And we'll definitely give you some good examples on that. And um, yeah, make sure you like this video and stuff and, uh, if you're on the audio side of things, definitely give us a rating on Apple Podcasts or whatever streaming platform you're on. It definitely helps us out. Uh, like we said, we're definitely working on utilizing the website. We have a lot more of cosmetic shit on our side to do, but it is live, but there's not much there yet. But we have to fix that up, and we're gonna, we'll are gonna we let you know when that gets rolling and stuff, too. But, um, yeah, definitely like this video, comment. Let us know how you like um, also the fact of us doing you know, more so the astrolo the current astrological readings and upcoming astrological readings of, of the energies, um, but in the beginning of the video and stuff too, and tying that into whatever the discussion is at hand. Um, I personally love it. I think it's a great segue into things and really definitely anybody, everybody could get a benefit from that as well too. So, but let us know what you think. But yeah, yeah, I think that's it. I think I, I got nothing much else to say i agree I, I think the astrology is fun and i think it's uh mm -hmm. it's uh, it's something that's going to bring value into more people that actually still don't know about it or maybe you know we, we want to get more people interested in it mm -hmm. not because we have any agenda or like we don't even give readings yet mm -hmm. or anything it's like yeah. it is a great aspect it's, a good way to dip it's, your it's toes the in. science of synchronicity really mm -hmm. i mean like that think that to me was the is the the most fun part about it and if anything have fun with it and um 
leave uh, if there's any people who already are astrologers or study it or are, are a fan of it leave especially have conversations with us in the comment section yeah. about that like bring things in our like tell us what you think about the transits and things that you find more important maybe we didn't mention it you know we do have um we, we, we've set ourselves up here to talk about a lot in one podcast um and with uh, yeah of course there's probably going to be times we don't hit everything so yeah just let us know like what you think is mostly is most important on the astrological sense what we said that you it was intriguing what we said that you disagree with you know how it rolls you know mm -hmm. tell us you yeah, want us tell us to eat shit it's that's, yeah. that's, how, that's how it rolls and if you have if you have an if you potentially you're listening to this and you have an area of expertise and you're kind of the wheels are turning and you see how it's even your area of expertise is part of this integration of what we're talking about stuff too send us an email the intrinsic minds at gmail.com and never know maybe we could do a little collab or do a little talk so yeah always open to it right on that note mm. share like subscribe comment all that fun stuff we will see you next time thank I you cut my thumb in. off guys I'm also using a plastic cup today because I keep breaking glasses. It's, it's, he's he's having a rough one, people. But we'll <laughs> yeah. But but let's leave it on the good one. Yeah. Geo, we'll we'll uh, we'll let you have a venting sesh opening of next episode. Yeah, next one. <laughs> yeah, we'll All see right. what I learned. Until next time, guys.